purpose and love, knowing that this day is a gift and a blessing. We come together to recognize that whatever it is we put out into the world comes back to us multiplied. Whatever we're sowing, we're reaping. So I relax and I breathe and I recognize the power and presence of love and life. I recognize here and now that all that I give into my life returns to me. And so I am blessed beyond measure as I open my mind and heart and allow love to be the guiding light and force, kindness, respect, to be the way that I live and the way I choose to treat my fellow humans. I know today that all of us are truly a gift and a blessing. So filled with love and light and knowing that this day unfolds in all good things, I release these ideas to the one with a grateful, grateful heart. Cast me not away from thy presence. Please don't take your spirit from me and restore the joy of salvation so that I may worship thee. Create in me a clean heart and purify me, purify me. Create in me a clean heart so I may worship thee. And so it is. Good morning. My name is Sheldon Edwards, and I welcome you to our Sunday Spiritual Experience. We are Verity Center for Better Living, a New Thought Teaching Ministry, a member of the Universal Foundation for Better Living. Namaskar. If you are joining us for the first time, it is my pleasure to greet you on behalf of the minister and our members. It is my hope that something said or done today will make a positive difference in your life. Please know that we accept you, respect you, and appreciate you. If you have any questions or need to find out about our center, please visit our website, veritycenter.org, or subscribe, and also like our Facebook page. We thank you for spending this time with us. Our vision is creating and maintaining a spiritually based community that facilitates enlightenment, enrichment, and empowerment. Our mission is offering spiritually based principles and techniques to those who are seeking to live healthy, happier, and more prosperous lives. Our motto is always verifying the truth, vivifying the spirit, vitalizing the soul. We offer a full range of sacerdotal services, classes, and spiritual coaching. There are also opportunities to become an active part of this community. Please refer to our website for more information. Please affirm the opening statement with me. It is on your screen. I understand the power of my consciousness and I choose to be diligent in my thinking. I choose to love myself as I am. I choose to respect God's creation. 
as such, I draw all good into my life in all ways, always. If you have your daily inspiration publication with you, please turn to the page after the center page or follow on the screen. I will be reading the first three core beliefs. We believe that it is God's will that every individual on the face of this earth should live a healthy, happy, and prosperous life. We believe that such a life is within the reach of each one of us and the way to its attainment begins with the realization that the kingdom of God is within us, waiting for us to bring it into expression. We believe that we can bring this kingdom forth by practicing the universal spiritual principles handed down through the ages and taught by our way shore, Jesus Christ. Today's inspirational reading is found on page 35. And, would be and will be read by Sienna Murray of the Sunday School. Detour and reroute. Detours and reroutes on a roadway usually indicate that some construction is underway or an accident has occurred, making travel slower or impossible. Certain ways of thinking and behaving in life will require detours and reroutes if we want to travel successfully. Life's detours and reroutes can always work to our advantage when we perceive them through the eyes of spirit, which always sees all available good as possibilities. As long as we continue to look at and keep our attention focused on the difficulties involved with changing and rerouting thought directions in our life, we will remain in the same lane, delaying our process. Therefore, when you find yourself engaging, thinking, or speaking critically of others, spreading rumors or debasing them or acting unkindly for any reason. Stop immediately and mentally detour and reroute your thoughts, conversation, and behavior. Make a conscious effort to mentally detour and reroute negative thoughts and impulses in order to behold the Christ in all. And the scriptural text is taken from Kings chapter 13, verse 10, voice, and it says, so the man of God took a different path from the one he had originally traveled. And so it is. Thank you, Sienna. Please listen to the reminders. Daily meditation and Wednesday evening breakaways continue. To receive the links or phone in information, please send an email to admin at veritycenter.org or leave a message at 416-240-1956. Summer classes are in session. Wednesdays at 1 p.m., Living the Spiritual Ideal. Saturdays, 1 p.m., A Life in Prayer, Part 2. There is no registration fee for these two classes. Thursdays at 7 p.m., Basic Truth Principles 2, The Book. Lessons in Truth by Emily Cady. Monday, 6 p.m., The Game of Life by Florence Scoville Shin. The registration fee for Monday and Thursday is $20 per class. For more information, please contact the office. Step out and take pictures of the beauty around you that surrounds your day. Submit, submit them to veritivibe1 at gmail.com. You may be featured in the art gallery. Adult Summer Stretch and Strengthen is here. July 20th through to the 31st, Monday to Friday, two sessions each day. Early risers, 6, 15 a.m. For mobile participants, a mat is required as floor work is involved. And then at uh, morning flow at 8.30 a.m., participants with limited mobility, a chair is required. For more information, email veritivibe1 at gmail.com for registration. Join the vibe. Do you have questions about Zoom, cell phones, computers, or any technology? Verity Vibe is planning a Tech Talk series. Please submit your questions to veritivibe1 at gmail.com. Mark your calendar. There, is, there will be a summer session on Saturday, August 8th from 10 a.m. till 2 p.m. More information will follow. This 
ends the reminders. Let us prepare for a moment of conscious communion with our source and supply. I now let go. There's nothing to fear. I now let go. There's nothing to fear. I now let go. There's nothing to fear. I now let go. I now let go. There's nothing to fear. With courage and strength, I stand in this moment, accepting and knowing that there is but one, one power and presence, one source and substance, one infinite creative intelligence, one energy of life and living that allows me to fully express and be all that God created me to be. I know in this moment that I am created in the image and of the likeness of God, that as I live in this life experience, I do so knowing that all that I put out into the world comes back to me multiplied and overflowing. So today I choose kindness, compassion, respect, discovery. I choose to challenge myself in new ways at, new, at all times and to open my mind and heart that I might live and celebrate and rejoice in God moment by moment and day by day. This journey is one of awakened awareness. And as I open my mind, as I connect to my heart, as I choose love as the response to each and every situation I discover, what happens is beauty is realized, harmony becomes the norm, and peace is a natural outcome. So my heart is filled with gratitude as I open my mind and heart and choose to live in a way that is truly expansive. I don't know what I don't know, so I adopt a a way of being that is curious. I choose to discover new things moment by moment. And as I do that, I begin to see the world in a whole new way. I begin to see humanity in a whole new way. And as such, blessings abound. So living in harmony, love, joy, and peace, I surrender these ideas to the eternal one. I know that all is well and good, and I let this be the truth. I now let go, I now let go, I am one with no one. And with a grateful heart, I say, and so it is. And so it is. Thought for the week. The thought for the week is by Raymond Halliwell. Only your own can come to you and be sure that all is yours will become manifest. It is your responsibility. No other person may share it. Your own and all of your own will come to you. We will now have a musical selection by Chris Paul. Oh, 
Thank you, Chris. Today's lesson, Law of Compensation, will be given by the Reverend Barbara Schreiner Trudell. Thank you, Sheldon. Thank you, Chris. It's so great to be here again. The Law of Compensation is such a good one because I'll tell you, sometimes we think the world owes us a living, it owes us some kind of special favor, and the truth is uh, it actually does not. Uh, he says in the books, <clears throat> the early religious teachings were that justice might be expected in another life. So we want to get past that because, <clears throat> pardon me, this is the life that we have. This is the life that we're living. And we are going to get our return in this now moment right here in this lifetime. So we don't want to wait until later. We want to know that what we put out into the world is what's coming back to us. So the law of compensation, uh, inevitably our own comes to us and only what is our own. So whatever is going on in your life right now is absolute perfection. So we want to see it as good. We want to see it as exactly what should be happening and where it should be happening. Now, this is kind of hard to hear sometimes because we think it should be something different. We think it should be something better or whatever. So we want to make sure that we recognize that where we are is actually leading us somewhere or bringing us from somewhere, but it's all God and it's all good, okay? In um, the study of the laws of truth, we learn to apply them so that they will dissolve all adverse things in our lives. So the journey that we're on, the things that we are doing, the way that we're doing them is creating for us something. So it's whatever we're planting in mind is beginning to show up in our world of affairs. So we have to remember that the law is exact all the time, that whatever I put in is what's going to come out. Whatever I sow, that is what I can reap and nothing more. No one else can cause me to have a certain experience. Everything comes from me somehow, some way. So it's trying to work with this. Um, he says in the book that you cannot change the law to suit your mistakes, but we must change our use of the law to correct the application. And he goes on to say, the purpose of this particular lesson is to show you that you can use the law to lift yourself out of the place where you are to the place where you rightfully belong. Your right place is where you can enjoy success and plenty. This is natural as the law intended. Your failure to realize these things is a miscalculation, a mistake. The law does not need to change. Success or prosperity does not need to be made. It always is. But you in turn must change. Then your affairs will follow the change. The key to successful living is the right adjustment of your thoughts. So when we're, when we're going along, and all of us have had experiences that we would prefer not to have, and if we begin to look at the fact that every single thing that has come into our life has given us some kind of understanding, some greater knowledge, some greater gift, so that we could then be ready for the next thing that was coming in our lives. There's some things that happen that sometimes we look at this and we go, whoa, this is really terrible. 
But what if we just looked at it and went, you know what, it is what it is. And it is allowing me to discover something new about myself, something different maybe. And as I look at myself and begin to see who I really am and begin to recognize the power that I am, then what happens is I can begin to change the life that I'm living and the way that I'm living it, okay? So the, whatever it is that I want to get in this world, I have to be prepared to give into life an energy and vibration that will bring it to me, okay? I have to participate, okay? Nothing's gonna happen unless I sow the idea and then I can reap the benefit. What required of us is change. And I think most of us can probably honestly say that change is not our favorite thing, but change is part of what life is. Everything is changing constantly and continuously. The only thing that doesn't change is the law or God, right? That divine presence is a constant. All of that is always the same. Everything in that is always working in the same way. What must change? If I want my life to look differently, there's something in me that I have to change. So as we do our prayer and meditation practice, what we're doing, hopefully, is allowing ourselves to lovingly and kindly and respectfully, compassionately sit in the moment and observe. Observe the way my thinking goes. Observe the way I'm behaving or thinking about life and what's going on. Look at the way that I see the world. If I'm seeing, you know, all sorts of problems, what happens is my mind is focused on the problems. The problems then become more manifest, right? I begin to see more things that interrupt my harmony because I'm seeing all the discord. We want to acknowledge that, yes, this is going on in the world. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to focus my mind on what I would like to see instead. Okay. I'm going to focus on the possibility of this changing. I'm going to focus on the idea that health can be restored, that harmony can be revealed, that peace becomes possible because I'm willing to open my mind and heart and view the world and her people in a new way. Okay. So sometimes we have to really change what it is we're thinking. We have to remember that, you know, each one of us has been raised by, you know, some individuals and whatever their belief systems were, then those things have been given to us very generously and kindly. And so we may be doing things or seeing things or saying things that might not feel right to somebody else, but it's happening because of what it is that we know. Now, we are so incredible because we can learn something new. We can discover something new. So it's really, really important that we have an open mind so that we can hear another person's opinion, hear another person's experience, because the truth is we cannot know what another person is feeling or experiencing in any given moment, all right? We can make an assumption, but that assumption, of course, comes from what we know about ourselves, right? It's coming from our belief system, not theirs, okay? So in order to discover somebody else's experience, we have to be willing to listen, to hear something that maybe we've said or done that didn't sit right. And if we're willing to do that, we will discover something new because we don't know what we don't know right? And in order to open our minds and hearts to be willing to sow the seeds of harmony and love and grace and goodness and, and all that good stuff, I must be willing to sit maybe in an uncomfortable conversation to discover something new, to awaken to a bigger idea about life and living. So that's up to us to choose, to choose to be uh, a conduit for love and light, to choose to be a conduit for that Christ consciousness that we allow it out in each and every moment so that the world that we're living in begins to show up in the way that we imagined was possible. 
Um, <clears throat> he says, once you have changed your vision, you will change your conditions. Only when we cease to recognize a condition, do we cease to attract it. The only way we can cease to recognize things is to change our minds about them. So here's the thing. When we are looking at, for example, the 24 hour news cycle, uh, the 24 hour news cycle is a fear breeding ground um, in my mind. So uh, I try to limit the amount of time it's on. OK, so if I want to know what's going on in the news, generally, I can get all the information because most people will tell me. And other than that, if I listen to it, maybe once in a week for half an hour tops, I will get kind of all the relevant information that's going on. Anything that I need to hear, anything big that happens, I will hear it anyway without even watching the news because it's going to show up on my computer when I log in. Right. And the minute I go into my email, there's the daily news right there. So I get that snapshot. That is enough. It really is enough. I don't have to know every bad, terrible thing that's going on in my world to recognize that a change must happen. The only way a change is going to happen is it has to begin where I am and it must begin where you are. So we take a look at what's going on. We take a look at what's making us uncomfortable, unhappy, miserable, uh, what's hurting or harming us in any way. And we begin to reflect on what if this were healed? What if this was no longer a problem or a concern? What might that look like? What might that look like? And so I've been looking at, you know, lots of things that are going on right now, Black Lives Matters, uh, the whole COVID-19, the discomfort people have with wearing masks or, or talking about racial in inequality, the things that are going on right now that are really loud and, and really drawing our attention. And when I look at them, I go, what is it that I choose to see in my world? What is it that I want for my family and friends? Because a lot of my friends or people I consider my family are part of the black lives. So I want to see healing and love and respect and compassion, all of that happening, not someday, but today. So I begin to focus on harmony. I've been praying a lot for harmony lately. Harmony in my, my own life, harmony in my own world, harmony in this place that I'm showing up, harmony and peacefulness, respect and kindness, so that the people I love are experiencing love, that I get to look at my own places where I have a blind spot and I willingly change and, and alter those things so that I show up in the greatest possible way. And when it comes to health, I don't want to focus on COVID-19. Yes, I'm going to social distance. Yes, I'm going to wear a mask in public. But the truth is that in my mind, I am choosing to see health. I'm choosing to see health everywhere I look. I'm choosing to see health as the natural state of being. I'm choosing to see that and to know that and to allow that because my focus, the seeds that I'm planting, have to be ones that create harmony in all ways. Harmony, success, love, peace, all of that happens when I clear my mind. God is right here where I am, where you are. God is all there is. There, there is one thing going on and only one thing going on. And because this one thing, I live, move, and have my being in it, it's the constant. All that we do as human beings is the disruption and the force, shall we say. Let us harmonize the force. Let us come together with such kindness, with such respect, with such compassion, with such love and acceptance. Let us come together knowing that God is right here and that God is good all the time. Not some of the time, but all of the time. Can we begin to open our minds to that idea that I can change the world by changing my consciousness? Now that might seem a stretch, but when we're talking about changing the world, we're talking about if I change my mind, then when I wake up tomorrow morning and I see something that doesn't match the new change, it is my responsibility to deal with that thing and continue to deal with it in love, in harmony, in peace, 
to choose to look at it from a new vantage point, but to act and to know what it is that I need to do in any given moment to ensure that change happens. We're living in a world that feels a little out of control at the moment. And maybe that's a good thing. Maybe we needed to lose control to actually find ourselves. I'm choosing to find myself today. And I invite you to do the same. I invite you to open your minds and hearts so that you can begin to live your life with a sense of absolute power, joy, and love, creating the life you want for yourself, not what somebody else wants for you or not what somebody else expects of you or for you, but your life, your way under your terms. Each of us should be able to live to our highest potential in every single moment. We should live abundantly. In the beginning, the word and the word had power, has power. What is it that I speak? What is it that I think? How am I showing up? Am I teachable, right? All of us have our little blind spots, right? I have mine because I have white privilege. I have a blind spot. I don't notice it until somebody mentions it, but I willingly hear it. And I choose to go, oh, I could do that better. Right? I could choose to, to think in a new way. I could choose to take what I know and who I am and use it for good. Right? We call ourselves up to a higher standard. We call ourselves up to a new place so that we can begin to take this remarkable teaching that we have and live it. It's great to come to church on Sunday, but do you take the practice the meditation, the prayers, the rewiring of our minds to create a new world. Are we doing that? Or are we leaving here on Sunday afternoon going, well, that was fun and, you know, wiping our hands and then going on complaining and, and, and being upset and, you know, feeling sick and, oh, I don't have enough money. Or are we living in that place of lack and limitation for six days of the week and then for the hour that we're here, we all of a sudden go, oh, this sounds so good. We need to be in classes. We need to be in classes so we can rewire the thinking that's going on because it's been set in place. We need to be attending the Wednesday evening breakaway. Not for the church, but for us. It's great to sit down and have a conversation and say, but what about this in the world? What about that in the world? You tell me that it is my thinking creating my reality. Well, I didn't create this. Look at what's happening right here in my life. I didn't create that. We can have that conversation when we're together in our Wednesday evening breakaway. We can have that conversation in class where we begin to you know, dismantle the laws and look at them in a way that allows us to go, whoa, I am a creator. My thinking determines my reality. The words I speak have power. Maybe I didn't know that before. So when I come to class or it comes to the Wednesday evening breakaway, what I discover and learn is how much potential and power I truly have that I can affect change in my life and in my world. And if each one of us begins where we are, the law of compensation is exact. Whatever is yours will come to you, okay? Nothing more, nothing less, right? The world doesn't owe you a living or anything else, but the universe will respond to you in kind. So when I show up as love and peace and joy and harmony, acceptance, wonder, awe, all of that, that draws to me matching experiences. He says, change the mind and you have changed the root and the purpose. To blame your difficulty on other conditions or on other people is not correct. It's not the law. Okay. It's like we have to change our mind. We have to go within and say, okay, if my life is reflecting something in me, then wouldn't it make sense to change that? Let us begin where we are and go, what is it that I bring? What is it that I can do in my life to create the life that I want? So I'm looking at 
harmony. Harmony is my big word for right now. I want to understand what's going on in the world in such a way as that I can live in harmony with everyone that I can find a way of being loving and kind and supportive, even when the person in front of me might be angry and vindictive, where I can choose to love my enemies. And by love my enemies, I'm talking God love. I'm not talking like, because we don't need to like somebody who's doing hateful things. However, by finding that spark in them, the Christ in them, because it exists everywhere, right? Every single man, woman, and child is a spiritual being. If I can find that spark and pour a little gasoline on it, maybe it'll burst into a big flame or an explosion and a shift in consciousness will occur that will allow that person to discover love for themselves, which in turn will allow them to love me or you, right? We begin to find that spark. So this is where forgiveness comes in. Forgiveness is such a powerful, powerful force. Again, what you plant is what you're going to reap. He says in the book, Jesus included this law as a supreme factor in his doctrine. Give and it shall be given unto you. Judge not that ye not be judged. With that, what measure ye meet, it shall be measured unto you. And Paul said, whatsoever a man soweth that shall he also reap. The law that we reap, what we sow, is mathematically accurate. Each experience through which we pass operates ultimately for our good. And it might operate for our good because it's showing us an area where we need to shift our consciousness. It might be showing us something that we need to view from a new vantage point. He said, if we attract the unpleasant, it is often because some dormant or neglected phase of our nature needs to be awakened and developed. So that's good news because I can awaken it and, and develop it, right? I can awaken within myself something wonderful, just as you can. So we can look at the, the little bump in the road that shows up or the big bump in the road that shows up and go, okay, so let me meditate on this. Let me go into my deep consciousness. Let me sort of go into the depths of my being and shift whatever it is I need to shift to begin to bring me back to harmony. He says, whatever we require and whatever we need is always good. This is a correct attitude to adopt because all experiences is for our good and we must be able to see it in that light. So when something happens that looks to us to be really bad and negative and awful, if we take a look at it and go, okay, I wanna see the good in this. I wanna find that seed so that I can water it and see it grow, so that I begin to experience the goodness. He said, crowd out all inferior thoughts by superior thoughts, evil thoughts by good thoughts, ugly thoughts by beautiful thoughts, distressing thoughts by pleasant thoughts, and you will begin to overcome the growth of all negative and confused states of wrong and discord. In other words, learn to think constructively of all purpose, all persons, all things, all events, and all circumstances. As you train yourself to mentally look for the good, you will move towards the good. So if we begin to look at everything that's happening and we choose to see it as good, right? I demand to see the good in this. I demand to see the good in this right here, right now. I demand, okay, God got some good happening here. Show me. Show me the good so that I can expand it and grow it. Because sometimes, you know, we get smacked down a little bit and it looks like, wow, you know, what are we going to do to shift this or change this? And it all begins in mind. Whatever you plant, whatever you're sowing, that's what you're reaping. Nothing more, nothing less. The law is exact. And this is really, really good news. Because when I look at my life and I see an area that isn't working the way I want to, the thing that I can do with that is go, okay, so when have I experienced this before? What pattern is operating here? How can I shift and change this? And if I will be teachable, I will discover whatever it is I need to do, be, have, in order to create the new reality that I'm looking for. So am I looking for 
peace and love and joy in my life? Am I looking for harmony, wonder and awe? And then I fight with the clerk at the store? Maybe, <laughs> right? But what we wanna remember is I don't wanna fight with the clerk at the store, right? If something's happened there that feels really ill, let me address it. Let me talk to that person about it. Let me share a little love with them and just maybe they will look at things differently. But fighting with them won't do anything. Being mad at them won't do anything. Storming out of the store going, I can't believe the way this person treated me. That isn't gonna do anything, just upset me, right? So we look at every situation and we wanna to come to it in love. We wanna change the way we view the world so that we can begin to see it in the way we would really, really like to see it. We want to experience it in a way that we envision is possible. I believe we are at a crossroads right now. At least it feels like that to me, that we are at a place we've never been before. With the health issues, all of a sudden, you know, everything on the planet kind of got, um, <laughs> you know, it's like we're all kind of in the same boat. It doesn't matter if, you know, if you live in China or you live in Russia or you live in South America, you live in, in Canada or North America. COVID-19 is wrapped itself around the world. And so all of the countries, or probably the majority of them anyway, the big ones, are working to create a vaccine to begin to heal this health pandemic. But isn't that beautiful? You know, when you really think about it, if we were looking for the good in this, okay? So what's the good in this? Well, there's a couple things. One is that the animal life on the planet, the plant life on the planet has really uh, restored itself. The waters are cleaner. There's a whole bunch of good that came by locking people up in their homes. It's like take human beings out of the equation and watch nature flourish. So that happened. So that's kind of a cool thing. The other thing is that, you know, probably for the first time ever that I can think of, and I might be wrong here, but I think for the first time ever, everybody's working toward one thing. Everybody's focusing their attention on accomplishing one thing finding the vaccine, finding a cure, finding a way of changing this health situation. So everybody's working together. We've got collaboration. Collaboration's a good thing. When we start working together, when we start spending time together, we start seeing that we're not so different after all, right? We've noticed with COVID-19 that it's not a respecter of persons. Doesn't matter if you're you know, a prince or a pauper. It's right there. It can touch either life, a child or a senior, irrelevant, right? It reaches all of us or has the potential to reach us all. So what we want to do is focus our attention on health. And we do that, number one, by, you know, honoring things like the masks and they're uncomfortable and a little bit annoying, but we honor that because we're like, okay, if I wear the mask, I make sure the people around me are safe from me just in case I have something going on that I don't know about, right? So we, we come together to create something new. When it comes to the whole situation with racial divide that's been going on forever, as we come to understand, and it has to start with us because we are one, right? We recognize that there's only one thing going on. We as metaphysicians recognize that we are part of one thing, that there really is no separation between you and me. We are one. And if we are one, then I can't really harm you without harming me. Am I right? So what we want to do is take that teaching, take that idea, take that model and ramp it up. Ramp it up so much that it begins to move out into the world around us to shift and change the energy at a core level. If we have been taught to hate, we can be taught to love. Love is far more powerful. Love is far more powerful. So let us find a way to take this teaching 
that we've got here at Verity Center for Better Living. Let's take this better living teaching and let us put it into real time practice. When we see something that is absolutely causing outrage for us, let us sit in that energy of the outrage. Let us feel what it feels like. And then let us choose to send love out into our world to begin to dismantle that and create a new level of harmony and understanding. This teaching is all powerful if we practice it, not if we hear it, not if we think we know it, but if we will choose to live it, we will make a difference in our world. Is it easy? No, it's not. You know, if somebody's in your face doing something nasty, it's really hard to just kind of ah, take a breath and <laughs> not take it on, right? But somebody else's hate is not my problem. That's their problem. And so I choose in this moment to move into a place of, okay, God, you're right here and I know you're there. And I want to see that expand and grow. The law of compensation says that, you know, the things that I plant in life are going to grow and expand. And so I want to make sure that I am doing everything I can in order to create the world that I want to live in. He said, if you want success in living life, you must exercise an intelligent discrimination of your thoughts. When you talk hard times, money scarcity, scarcity limitation, you are sowing that type of seed. Okay, what kind of harvest do you expect to get? If the farmer sowed thistle seed and then complained uh, that his field did not bring forth wheat, you would say, well, foolish man, didn't he know he could only expect what he had planted? Never make an assertion, no matter how real it seems to be to you, if you do not want it reproduced or continued in your life. Okay, the spiritual supply from which the visible comes is never depleted. Truly, you will lose interest and love only as you live from that place. Um, there's so many good things in this chapter. It's absolutely crazy. Um, you must realize that by working and proving the law, you do so step by step with each step bringing you closer to your goal. So we, we realize that, you know, some of these issues we've been working on for a long time and uh, forever, in fact, and how do we get there when it appears that nothing has changed or nothing is better? I think, you know, I sometimes talk about spring cleaning. You know, when you do your spring cleaning, you, you know, empty the bookshelves, you empty the cupboards, you scrub in the back and you create a, a real big mess actually while you're getting all the dirt out of the corners and then you put everything back and it looks beautiful. I kind of look at the world today as uh, a big spring cleaning that all of the dirt that we tried to pretend didn't exist has risen to the surface. Because it's risen to the surface, we can see it really clearly. We cannot pretend it isn't there. And because it's so present right now, we can begin to take that, uh, well, that washcloth or dust rag and begin to clear it away. And the way we do that is by our consciousness. He said, you must realize by working and proving the law, you do so step by step. And with each step, you're bringing your goal closer. Compensation means equal returns for that which is given. It means a balance of that quality or service that is extended to another. I am certain that if you conduct your life, which is your business, along the path of compensation rather than competition, you will find it more enjoyable to compare your quality and service with another. Um, if you are not succeeding, if you lack any good thing, look more closely to the cause. It is not outside, it is somewhere within. And then he comes up with three things to pay attention to. First of all, do you expect something for nothing? And I, you know, sometimes we do, right? And he said, that doesn't work. Does it make you feel good or pleased when you get something without paying for it? You know, sometimes you go to the store and they're making change and they give you the wrong change back and they give you an extra five or an extra 10 and you go, woohoo, 
parts of that you're pocket going, ooh, I'm a winner. No, <laughs> we're not a winner when we keep that five. Because if we noticed that we were given the wrong change, law of compensation is exact. We need to give that back immediately when we notice it. Because if we don't, what we reap down the road is gonna match that theft. Okay, so we wanna pay attention. Your returns will always be unsatisfactory if in fact you're taking something for nothing. Uh, no matter where you go, be willing to pay your way. Second is, do you hunt for things that are called cheap? <laughs> So are we looking for that big deal? Are we not getting the things that we want because we're waiting? Uh, cheap thoughts can only bring cheap returns. You who wait for bargain days will always have to take bargains. But remember, there are no bargains in life. If you have gained monetarily, you may have lost in other ways. You place yourself in a vibration that lowers your pre present state. It forces you below your proper level. Thus, you become a party to the violation and come under its penalty. So again, if we're always looking for something cheap, if we're always, you know, I remember um, getting our roof done in our house and, you know, the company we hired was not the cheapest company by any means, but came with a good recommendation. I really liked the people. In fact, I renovated the whole house. Interestingly, I didn't have any problems with any of the contractors. We replaced all the windows and doors. We got a new roof put on, we got a front porch built and put on, all landscaping and all kinds of stuff that happened. I never once looked for the cheapest. I always looked for the person who I resonated with. And they might have been mid price, they might have even been at the top price. But if it felt right, I trusted that and went with that. And as such, we didn't have any challenges. Everything finished on time, the house looked beautiful. Do you begrudge spending money? Well, sometimes you'll know if you do this because, you know, the Rogers bill comes in and you go, oh, man, oh, how come it's so big? Or we stiff it in, stick it in a drawer, you know, the hydro bill comes in. It's like, oh, man, oh, I hate that, right? Do you begrudge spending money? Release your money cheerfully, even if it be the last dollar you have. Decide what your need is. If it is of more value than the dollar in your purse, then spend the dollar cheerfully. So whatever we're put, putting out, right? We're doing it with love and appreciation. If you're giving your tithe and you're giving it with the, oh man, like I really can't afford this. There's a, an energy behind that of lack and suffering and discord. And that's what has to come. It has to come. Nothing else can, right? Because your thinking has said, I don't have enough, I don't have enough, I don't have enough. And then whatever you give, that becomes lack in your life. And so it will reproduce. He said, the law inevitably produces its own exactness as a rule of action. It is a divine law and tolerates no violation. It does not bring forth figs from thistles. If you misuse the laws of harmony, health or supply, the law of compensation becomes manifest. We are free agents to choose the method of procedure in our life. The law is infinite and through its expression, all things are possible to us. All things are possible to us. What is it that you want in your life? What is it that you're seeking that, that you would really love to manifest? What area of your life would you like to ramp up a little bit so that it's just, oh, so exciting to live and to laugh and to play maybe your career or maybe your wealth or maybe your health, whatever it is, just know the law of compensation is exact. What I plant, what I sow is what I will reap. He closes the chapter by saying, what is life giving you today? Health, happiness, and abundance or sickness, misery, and lack. Whatever it is, it is your own. It belongs to no one else but you. You make your investments and you are daily enjoying the profits or losses. If you are dissatisfied with your investment, it may be wise for you to note what you invested. Only your own can come to you and be sure that all that is yours will become manifest. It is your responsibility. No other person may share it. Your own and all of your own will come to you.
everything. And this is really good news. And it might sound harsh, right? But it isn't. This is really good news. Because we understand the law of gravity, we don't do things like step off the top of a high building. Well, unless we won't die, right? We don't do that because we know we would destroy our body in the process, okay? So we don't break that law. When we're coming out our house, we don't sort of forget we have stairs and just walk straight out in the hopes that, right? We know the law of gravity is there. It's gonna drop us down, right? We might twist an ankle, break an ankle, whatever. We know it's there. The law of compensation, the spiritual laws of the universe are no different. Whatever it is that we are thinking about is what's going to occur. Whatever is happening in our lives is a reflection of the consciousness that we hold. And that is really good news because if I created the discord, the disharmony, the disease, I have the power to change it. Look at the uh, Reverend Dr. Sheila McKeithen. When she got that prognosis that you're going to die, you're so sick, you're going to die. And she went, yeah, I'm not having any of that. And she discovered this teaching. Now, she didn't read about this teaching. She practiced this teaching. Are you practicing? Are you checking in daily, moment by moment? Can I do better? Can I be better? Is there something in my life that I'm missing? Am I willing to see it? Am I willing to take the blinders off so that I can see what's possible for me, for my life, for living? Am I ready? Am I ready to show up in my life consciously, creatively, and consistently so that I might create a life that is fulfilling and satisfying? I create my life and you create yours. And that is the really good news. If I had the power to create discord, I have the power to create harmony. So my dream is harmony, love, peace, and joy for all, respect and kindness for all. My life is a reflection of this divine love. And that's where I wanna put my practice day by day and moment by moment. I invite you to love yourself so much that you can love another. And that maybe that person will begin to love themselves enough so that they can love you back. It really is a journey of awakened awareness. So I am so grateful you joined me this morning and I'm so grateful for the love and joy that you share and that you are. Thank you, God bless.
Oh, it's so wonderful to listen to Shemroy and Chris and Richard and to enjoy the music that, that uh, they create every week. It is such a gift. Voices of praise. We are, we're really blessed, actually, to have such a talented group of people here supporting our ministry. So all is well, all is well. So it is that time of the service when we give back of our good. It's when we do our, our tithing. And so we can't pass the basket today, but we can pass the virtual one. So let us join together in our offering blessing, which you will see on your screen. Together, please. Divine love through me blesses and multiplies all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive. All is well, and so it is. So there's many ways that you can tithe to Verity Center for Better Living. You can go to veritycenter.org and click the donate link and donate by PayPal. You can send an e-transfer to admin at veritycenter.org. Or you can mail in your checks to Verity Center for Better Living, 447 Vaughn Road. Allow yourself to continue to give and to support this ministry because it really is something that uplifts and makes good for all of us. So let us do a blessing. Join with me in consciousness as we bless this offering. What I know in this moment here and now is that the universe is abundant. And that as such, my life is abundant as I connect with, recognize and realize that I am one with this divine presence. As I allow this to be the truth, I know that in this moment and in every moment, that all that I have need of is right where I am. That I am prospered in all ways. And I know for Verity Center for Better Living, that it is prospering, that money is flowing in and through this ministry in a really strong and continual way. That the conduit of acceptance and receptivity is fully realized and that something wonderful has occurred. I know for each person who has made a prayer request that that prayer request is answered. I know for Reverend Evan and his family that divine love is realized, that we keep in our heart and mind beauty, love, grace, and goodness, and that the highest and best is fully realized here and now. I know in this moment that for all of the people who are serving us during this time, that they are honored and respected, loved and cherished, and that good is coming. For all of the people who are here today, for everyone who supports this ministry with time, talent, and treasure, we say thank you. We open our minds, we expand our hearts, and we know that love is realized. Allowing that to grow and multiply, I surrender these ideas to the one. For all is well, and let it be so. 
and so it is. And let us say our closing affirmation together and then we will have a closing song with voices of praise. Together, please. God as light surrounds me, God as love enfolds me, God as power protects me, God as presence watches over me. Wherever I am, God is. I am one with the one, and so it is.